Can you guys remember The Flash, Season 4, Episode 7, Therefore I Am. And I was definitely looking forward to this episode. You guys know I have pretty much been really enjoying the season so far. And that's mainly because of how different uh, the season's been. The season has really embraced the idea of changing things up and, um, you know, moving ahead. And this episode did exactly that. Uh, I would honestly compare this episode to a Season 1 episode called uh, Tricksters, if you remember, in that episode, that's when we got a lot of the backstory about Eobard Thawne and how he came to be, and luckily we did get that for DeVoe here. The difference is that that was a little bit later in the season. Already, though, at episode 7, we know a lot about DeVoe, and as much as I did love this episode, because let me just say, it truly was a great one, and I thought it definitely was very well done. Uh, it does make me a little bit concerned with how the narrative is going to play moving forward, but let's just get into this episode because I definitely do want to talk about it. So we start off in Central City University four years ago, and we see Clifford DeVoe, who, let me just say, Neil Sandilands is magnificent in this role. He really is killing it. I love how calculated he is. I love how smart he is, and he really echoes a lot of um, the sort of quiet nature that Tom Cavanaugh brought to Thawne's role in season one. I think those two have a lot of similarities, not just because they were both wheelchair bound. I think they honestly, even though, you know, Thawne wasn't really wheelchair bound, um, you know, DeVoe actually is. I think they have a lot of similarities and we're definitely seeing that here. So the bell rings, everyone leaves and Clifford's fellow teacher and wife Marlise comes in and we find out a lot more about these two because previously we're like, all right, is she just working with him? Is she really his wife? What's the deal here? And and it turns out that they were pretty much just a normal couple. He complains that nothing matters to the students. Marlise assures him that he's the most brilliant mid that she knows. He shows her his plans for a thinking cap that can increase his mind's capacity. And if Marlise can build it, Marlise tells him that she can and they then kiss. So basically, we now go to the present where she's pouring lemonade. And Clifford talks about how she can maintain an immaculate household and take care of him. And basically, we pick up right where we left off last week where Barry and Joe and... um. Ralph, they found him, basically. Barry says the name DeVoe came up with an investigation, and Joe explains he's been connected to four criminal cases, and Clifford tells them his history. Joe asks if he knows Ramsey, Becky, Ralph, or Minna, and Clifford remembers Minna from when she was an anthropologist at the university before she was let go. And uh, remember, these are, you know, these are all the people they defeated so far this season, so Barry sees a painting of a samurai that looks like the Samuroid, and Clifford admits the shoe he speaks Japanese, and it's one of his areas of expertise and he says they need to change the way that people think and Marlise tells Joe and Barry that her husband needs rest Joe excuse himself and Barry and outside we see Harry asks if Clifford is their opponent if they should really be fearful of him if he actually is someone that might possibly be a threat and back at Star Labs Barry figures that Clifford is just playing nice but he knows that there's something weird about him and this is something I like you know the past two seasons, Barry hasn't really been the most likable character, but the difference is here, I'm with him in this case. You know, we know that what he's saying is in fact true, that Clifford is very much not on their side. Clifford is very much just playing them, and we definitely do see that. So, they agree to check Clifford's digital footprint and run a background check, and Iris asks Barry if he's alright. He says that he is, and look, I haven't been that critical of Iris this season, but this episode, she kind of pissed me off. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of annoyed with Iris in this episode. It's not not Candace Patton. I've always said it. I think Candace Patton is a com you know competent actress. I do think that she does have range, but Iris in this episode really wasn't a fan of. If they're gonna take her in this direction, it's really gonna get annoying. But because of four years ago, Clifford's watching a video of, believe it or not, Thawne when Marlise comes in with the thinking cap that she created, and I thought this was really cool, and again, it makes a lot of sense, because Thawne and Clifford are very similar individuals. She warns it requires an expanding energy source, and Clifford directs her attention to Thawne talking about his part, his uh, particle accelerator, and Clifford and Marlise then figure that they can use that, and basically we realize that this is kind of what got them to where they are. I really did love seeing that here, and again, it just provides a lot of context into this their relationship, and I really love seeing that throughout this episode. So back in the present, Clifford addresses a cabin about cycles in history, and Barry sits in the back watching, and 
The professor then sees him and dismisses his class, and afterward, Barry comes down and asks where he was on the on the night of the particle accelerator explosion, because he believes that he was definitely affected. So Clifford claims he has no idea. Barry asks him if he ever used a public bus, and he says that he prefers Lyft, and suggests that Barry is prosecuting him. And Barry gives him his card, speeds so fast as to be invisible, taking Clifford's coffee cup, and you can just tell, he is very much on to him. He does not at all trust DeVoe, and at start Star Labs, Kane analyze the DNA on the cup, assures the team that it's not meta DNA, and Cisco, Harry, and Iris have found absolutely nothing. So Barry insists that Clifford isn't what he seems, and he's hiding something. He has Cisco vibe the cup. Cisco sees Clifford and Marlise eating di dinner at home, and Iris talks to Barry privately, wonders if he's seeing things the way that he wants to see them, and this, again, to me, it seemed like their only reason this scene happened is because they just wanted to overcomplicate things, and I wasn't a fan of Iris. Iris just telling Barry, please, you're just getting, you know, you're just getting jitters because our wedding's in a week and you're not focusing clearly and Barry's unsure. Iris says she needs to get the wedding ready and needs Barry's help and I just, I don't care. I, I really don't care about this. I'm glad the show's scaling back on it this season, but if we're gonna make this where Iris is just constantly, um you know, trying to reel Barry in when he's on the right track. It's just, it's kind of annoying. But back to four years ago, we see Harrison and Kaylin go to a press conference, the initiation of the particle accelerator. And, you know, this is where the first episodes start, where we see Barry and Iris, you know, they're watching. And a pickpocket then takes off with Iris's purse, and Barry goes after him. And, of course, that's something that we saw in episode one. But meanwhile, this going on, Marlise asks if Harrison, if the accelerator could cause a, bene a benevolent phenomenon. So... Harrison insists the outcome has been predicted, and Marlise introduces herself, and Harrison realizes that Clifford is with her, and that he's a big fan of his work, and he thanks Clifford for coming, and then he leaves, and outside, Marlise tells Clifford that Harrison is lying, and wants an explosion, so she suggested they delay their plans because it's too risky, but Clifford is willing to take the chance to power the cap, so later, he takes a position outside Star Labs, while Marlise monitors the energy at their van, the accelerator goes into overdrive, Clifford puts on the cap, the energy levels sweep outside, it enters Clifford through the cap, blasting him down. The cap then falls off, and Marlise runs to her unconscious husband, administers CPR, and after a moment, he revives and says that he feels enlightened. And what's good about these scenes is that you can really tell these two are a genuine couple. These two genuinely are in love, but because of how smart that Clifford is and because of how much he studied this stuff, that does compromise their relationship a bit. And you really do see how heartbreaking this kind of is. I mean, it really did make me care for DeVoe a lot more than I than I expected to, and I enjoyed seeing that here. So, back in the present as police lab, Barry's working with an officer, calls Barry to Singh's office, and when he goes there, he finds Clifford and Marlise. They're there with Joe, and Clifford says that Barry's going to continue harassing him, and Singh apologized on behalf of the GCPD. Barry has no idea, but has no choice really but to apologize, and the DeVoe's leave. So, Singh asks Barry why he's bothering him and demands to know what case he and Joe are working on, and the captain tells him to stay away from the DeVos, and Barry looks at the office window to see Clifford looking back at him as he leaves. So back in his police lab, Barry's going over his files on Clifford when Iris comes in, and Barry hides him at super speed, but Iris finds them anyway, and Barry says that Marlise is helping Clifford and is a mechanical genius. Again, this is very much true. We know that is definitely the case here, and Iris points out that the others have found nothing on Clifford and tells Barry to let it go, and again, this just... I understand that the show wants to drag this out, I totally get it, but I just thought this was really annoying, the fact that she was telling him, oh, you know, you're not getting anything, you should just let it go. There obviously is something going on, and it's quite annoying when there's clearly something going on, and Iris is just kind of ignoring it. So that, that really is something that, like I said, that did bother me here. So back in the past, Clifford is furiously writing down formulas on a chalkboard in his home. He tells Marlise he solved all of them, invites her to ask him anything, and Clifford works out who was Jack the Ripper and says that Marlise made it all possible. He goes into convulsions and collapses to the floor. So you see that he's just so powerful and he's been so affected that now he casts, he convulses a lot and he, he just can't stand up anymore. And you, you really do see how his body is kind of breaking down. It's, it's like I said, it's kind of sad. So back in the present, 
President Starlight. Barry's going over the new meadows when the samurai hel when the samurai helmet buzzes. Barry opens and finds a phone inside. He removes the camera inside, speeds to the DeVoe house, and Marlisa's place Clifford in bed, drives off in her car. Barry watches from outside, then breaks into the house. He looks through the house and hears Marlise return from the grocery store. Barry hides and then speeds out, and we go to the back to the past where Doctor tells Clifford that his muscles are decaying, and Clifford already knows all the medical history. So Marlise asks for a prognosis, and Clifford realizes that complete paralysis um, and then death will come within two or three years, which, again, this is just really sad to see that, you know, he's actually going to get really bad paralysis. So the doctor leaves. Clifford says that his mind is drawing energy from his body, and basically because of how powerful he is, his body just can't take it. He's just that smart, and Marlise refused to give up, but Clifford points out that dying wasn't really part of their plan, and it's, it's just, it's sad. It really is sad. You could tell that these two, they want to be a normal couple, but th things really did get in the way here, and we go back to the present where Barry returns to Star Labs, says he found a camera and led it back to DeVoe. He missed it. He didn't trace it, but Cisco points out the camera isn't active. Barry finally tells him he broke into the DeVoe house and insists that he's ahead of them, so Joe then calls Barry in, tells him to stop, and finds Marlise crying and complaining to Sing. She says that Barry broke into their home and shows Singh photos of Barry breaking in. Singh assures her that Barry will stop it. Marlise then slaps Barry, tells him to stay away from her, and once she walks out, Singh suspends Barry for two weeks and advises him to consider his future in law enforcement. So later at the apartment, Iris comes home. She finds Barry staring out the window, and he shows her this restraining order for him against Devo. and Iris tells him to stop. Barry says that he can't stop and warns that he feels more dangerous than all the other villains that he's faced. And I would agree. I mean, the difference with the other villains that they were all kind of the same. They were all speedsters, but Clifford isn't that. He's much smarter. He's much more inquisitive, and he explains it's different because he's been happy since he came back from the Speed Force, and now he has to lose more than ever before. So Iris points out that there will be more for them to lose as time goes by, and Barry just let can't let it consume him, and Barry wonders how she's not scared. Iris tells him the two of them are Flash as they kiss, and I'm really tired of this we are Flash crap. It's really dumb. I don't understand what she's talking about out there. I mean, Iris doesn't really do shit. She's just kind of calling the shots, and honestly... It's one of those points where I really do wish... I'm glad they're giving Iris more to do, but I wish it wasn't her being part of Team Flash. I wish it was more of her just being the reporter. It'd be a much better arc for her. Arrow's realized how to keep Felicity to the side. Flash clearly doesn't know how to do that yet. So I think the way that Arrow's done it with Felicity, that's what the show needs to do with Iris. And uh, yeah, it's just... It's kind of annoying. But back in the past, Clifford then wheels himself to a fireplace. He tries to get up to reach a book. He falls, and Marlies tries to help him. He orders her away and yells at her that he's an atrocity, and after a moment, we see he asks her what he is. She tells him that he's her husband, and Clifford says that her husband is gone and asks her to let him die. Marlise then helps him into his wheelchair, says that she's not going anywhere, and when Clifford warns that his body will expire, Marlise shows him her plans for a suit that will let him live longer. So basically, that's how he's kind of become the thinker now, but back in the present, Barry goes to Clifford's auditorium, says that he wanted to ask him who he really is, and Clifford asks him if Barry Allen is asking or Flash, and he explains he was born on the same night as Flash, and points out he's prepared for everything eventually, and Barry wonders why he's revealing himself now, which I mean, that's something we all want to know, and Clifford says that he has nothing to fear from him or from the Council of Wells, so really, the reason why he's just, you know, completely just taking off the mask and, you know, just pulling out the rug and everything is because he doesn't feel that he has to be feared, that, the, that he should be feared of the Flash, he feels like he has nothing to worry about, and that is honestly really scary, the fact that already he thinks that he can beat the Flash, and he says that Barry can't outthink him, says he has powers of limitless thought, and is the fastest man al mind, mind alive, not the fastest man alive, the fastest mind alive, and students that come in, Clifford says he's already lost, congratulates him on his upcoming wedding, says he'll be thinking of him, and later Barry tells the team what Clifford told him, and I like that they're actually on his side here, they realize that, okay, yes, this is a situation, this is definitely serious, and Cisco then deems him as the thinker. Wally then comes in out of nowhere, figures that they could use a hand. Everyone welcomes him home. 
as you guys know, you know how much I love Wally, so I'm very happy to see this character return. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic, guys. I honestly don't know why Wally was brought back in this particular episode. The only reason I could think of is because they have the crossover coming up, and they want Wally to be in Barry and Iris' wedding. But other than that, I have no idea why they brought him back. But Barry figures it's Thinker's move. They take their time and formulate a plan. Meanwhile, Iris says that they get married, and in their lab, we see Clifford tells Mechanic that he likes the name Thinker, and they will be the first to experience his enlightenment, and he starts to have a seizure. Mechanic kisses him, says that she's nothing without him, and after a moment, he tells her to proceed. Mechanic removes the top of his head. The Thinker exosuit descends, transferred Clifford into its chair. He says that his body will survive long enough, and Mechanic asks him if he'll let them get married as they watch Star Labs on the monitor, and Thinker says that knowledge is nothing without love, and that is the way the episode ends. So, like I said, guys, I definitely really did love this episode. I thought we got a lot of context into Clifford and Marlisa's relationship. But it also really made me care for Clifford DeVoe as a character. This is someone who is so smart and... He's so focused on, you know, my, on his mind and how smart he is, but his intelligence, we can tell he's such a smart man that it often corrupts him and his wife's relationship. I think he genuinely does love Marlise. I think he would love to be in a world where him and Marlise, you know, they're just a happy couple and they have nothing to fear. Unfortunately, that's not the case. These two are always going to be in some sort of, you know, there, there's always going to be something getting in the way of that because of his mind power. They can't have this perfect relationship as I think they really do want, uh, they just unfortunately can't have it. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely is quite sad, and there definitely were some really well-done emotional scenes there that I weren't, that I wasn't expecting, knowing that Clifford's body is basically decaying, and that the thinker suit is the only thing keeping him from expiring, but even that can't really hold him anymore. It's really sad, honestly, and you, you know he's gonna die, but it honestly does make me feel a little bit of sorrow for him, and I do think they did a really good job with him. Like I said, Neil Sandilands is really killing in this role, and I love how quiet he is. I love that he's not this over-the-top, cheesy actor. He really is giving it his all here, and I really do love what we're getting from him, so he honestly is doing a really great job. Um, Like I said, really my only thing with this episode that I wasn't a huge fan of is... The fact that the team, I get it, they're not believing Barry, he has definitely been wrong before, but at this point, he was right, and we knew that he was right, so it was a little bit frustrating to see some of the team not believe Barry, but especially when it came to Iris. Iris was honestly really annoying me in this episode, I get it, you want to get married, but I get it that, you know, you're focused on your wedding and things like that. But completely just ignoring what Barry is saying and telling him that he's crazy and telling him he doesn't know what he's talking about, it's just not true. I mean, obviously, there is a threat out there, and this is something that they need to be focusing on. I like that they're listening to Barry now, but I do think that, you know, it's just a little bit too late for them to do that. Also, Wally coming back, I didn't really understand the need for Wally to come back. I think they honestly could have just kept him gone until the midseason finale, but they didn't do that. Um, either way, guys, I thought this was definitely a very well done episode. I thought we had a lot of great stuff going on here. It does make me a little bit concerned about where the rest of the season is going to go. Now that we know so much about DeVoe already, where else are we really going to go with this character? I mean, what I'm assuming is that he's just going to start off small, and then he's just going to grow more and more powerful. We've seen he's definitely done his research, and he thinks that he can outthink Barry, so we'll have to see really what he plans to do. Um you know, what his essential plan is. My thinking is that his brain power is so, um, you know, he's just so powerful and he's so intelligent that it's actually going to find a way to outdo Barry's speed because, you know, he says he has the fastest mind alive and he's going to find a way to take down Barry. I I'm not entirely sure. I could very much be overthinking it, but we'll just have to see where the show really does take this overall. Um, but like I said, I definitely was a big fan of this episode and I am going to give The Flash Season 3, Episode 7 there Therefore, I am a B plus. But over, guys, for me, this episode of The Flash, the most guys thought this episode overall left your thoughts, and definitely looking forward to seeing where we do go. Obviously, just like Supergirl, we're not going to touch upon this story until uh, the midseason finale. That's probably why this was similar to Supergirl, where we really got the plot moving, because we do have the crossover next week. It obviously, The Flash is probably the most prominent when it comes to the, to the crossover, because of course it is centered around Barry and Iris' wedding. I'm sure it's going to take place, we'll just have to see how that really does play out. But that's my review, hope you guys enjoyed, see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.